Cross Point Church, how's everybody? You good? Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. You got to stand up for me if you would. My name is Jesse. I'm one of the pastors here. I am glad that you guys are here this morning. If you are new with us, and we got lots of new folks in the room with us this morning. Uh, we're extra glad that you're here. And if I got, hadn't got to meet you already, I want to before you head out today. We got a little gifts for you. I'll talk to you more about that before the service is over. But here's what we're going to do right now. We're going to sing to Jesus together. And Chris is coming to preach this morning. It's going to be a great day. You guys glad to be here? I'm glad. It's early, but I'm glad you guys are here this morning. You guys bow your heads with me if you will. We're going to pray. God, we love you, and we are grateful for the opportunity that we have to worship you in this place, and we're grateful for the blessings. It's been a lot of blessings. You're good to us, better than we deserve in every way, in every single good thing that we have, we acknowledge to you right now. It comes from you. We don't deserve it, but you pour blessings into our life because you're good and generous Father, and we want to worship you for that this morning in the way that you deserve. Please lead us in worship through the Spirit. Thank you for grace through Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sing with us.
I wanted to read a scripture to you this morning. This comes from Romans chapter 5 and verse 6. It says, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. When we were utterly helpless, Jesus came for us. Amen? Amen. Jesus died for us. That's why we sing. We sing to lift up and praise and glorify the name above all names, the king above all kings. We're not just here to entertain ourselves for a few minutes before the preacher comes. But this moment is as precious as any moment. Because this moment we are able to give back to God in rejoicing and thankfulness that we were once sinners, but we are saved by his holy, holy grace.
Heavenly Father, we praise your name. We thank you for the holy water. God, we thank you that we have been forgiven. Our sins are made whole because of you. That, God, our lives are changed and that we are forgiven and covered by your blood. Bless Pastor Chris and use him now, God, to speak your truth. May you be lifted up in all things. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. You may be seated. Hope everybody's doing well, yes? All right. That's great. I don't know if it's a good sign or a bad sign. I'm having trouble with my watch this morning, and I've already drunk about half a bottle of water, so you might want to hang on. All right, I don't know what's coming. I'm not responsible. So anyway, let me wish you a happy new year. So happy new year. Happy new year. So I wasn't here last week. Thanks to Jeff for stepping in, filling in for me, and uh, hope your year is off to a great start. I hope that you are ahead on your New Year's revolutions. And not already behind. Well, it's, I've only missed two days. I've only missed three days. I'm back at it. Maybe it'll, we kind of tend to revert back a little bit, don't we, to our old ways and our old habits. But I hope your Christmas was amazing. I hope that you enjoyed some great time with family and friends and fellowship with others. And so, scientific survey, except for non-scientific, how many people traveled somewhere besides your home for Christmas, raise your hand. Does it have to be like you went to New York or California? Like that was kind of weak this morning for the new year. If you're, thank you for those of you online who did raise your hands. I appreciate that. So who traveled? Anybody? All right. So how did that go? Was there anything outstanding in the way of gas prices? Were you excited when you had to fill up with gas? Okay, thank you. One honest person in the place. We're thankful for that this morning. So it was a little bit higher. The prices are going up, right? How about if you had to go to the grocery store and feed that army that came to your house? You're like, well, we're going to open presents now? No, you already ate the presents. <laughs> That's where that is right now. So the costs continue to rise, and... We need to understand that it seems it's going to be that way for a while. A crazy thing this week. I just needed a one-foot piece, maybe a little over, of chain. Half-inch solid chain. So they go to the bucket because they buy it in buckets, right? And they pull it out to cut it. Four ninety-nine. I said, that is a nice way to say it's $5 a foot. I said, I'm going to get a bucket and start selling it myself, kind of like the gold chain I got in the 80s. <laughs> At the mall, they just pull it off and cut it and put an end on it. That was right after I had my body wave. Thank you very much. And shout out to Lisa Beard. It was uh, only about 10 bucks in that day and time. So thank you for the body wave. It was awesome. Okay, that's a matter of opinion. It was my opinion. Everybody else didn't like it. But so here we are. Lots of costs going up. Prices of material things everywhere going up. So I would ask you this morning, the cost of following Christ is actually also going up every day. So my question to you is, do you have a plan for 2023 what will you be paying? What will you be risking in order to follow the Savior you proclaim? You know, we hear many times uh, the saying, well, that's my cross I've got to bear. We're going to talk about that this morning and what that really means here in the Scriptures, but also in your life. We throw that around sometimes, don't we? Ah, you know how it's been like this for 15 years. It's just my cross to bear. This morning, I want you to take a close look at what you are willing to do in 2023 if you're willing to actually bear that cross. If you have your Bibles this morning, Luke chapter 14, verse 25. We'll begin there and go through verse 35. A large crowd was following Jesus. He turned around and said to them, If you want to be my disciple, 
you must, by comparison, hate everyone else. Your father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. And you do not, and if you do not carry your own cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. But don't begin until you count the cost. For who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there is enough money to finish it? Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of money and then everyone would laugh at you they would say there's the person who started a building and couldn't afford to finish it or what king would go to war against another king without first sitting down with his counselors to discuss whether his army of 10,000 could defeat the 20,000 soldiers coming against him and if he can't, he will send a delegation to discuss terms of peace while the enemy is still far away. So you cannot become my disciple without giving up everything you own. Salt is good for seasoning, but if it loses its flavor, how do you make it salty again? Flavorless salt is good neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. It is thrown away. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you so much for your word. God, we thank you for these words of your son Jesus telling us to count the cost of following him. Lord, I pray for everyone in this room, for everyone watching online, Lord, for those who would view this video later, that they would understand the cost that we truly should pay, not that we always do, but that we should for following you. And Lord, I pray in 2023, we would be more about following you and less about anything else in our lives. In Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen. Amen. So the first thing we see is there's a large crowd following him. Let's say you were walking down the street. Now, it would be kind of noticeable in Taylorsville, North Carolina, if there was a large crowd walking up the sidewalk in downtown Taylorsville, right, or uptown, either one, whichever you want to call it. I don't know which it is. I didn't want to be incorrect there, but whichever it is, if there was one person walking and loads of people following behind, you would be interested in what was going on, yes? Because we don't see that. So a large crowd followed him. And maybe you are interested, I was. Who were they? Who were they? It just says a large crowd. Some of those people could have been people involved in a miracle that Jesus performed. And they said, I want to be right with him. This is the Son of God. I want to be right with him. Maybe it was someone who had heard from a friend, who heard it from someone else. This is the guy. He's the one that cast out demons. He's the one that heals the blind. He's the one that makes the lame to walk. we got to get closer. Maybe there were those folks in there. Maybe there were some who just said, well, I, I don't know. I, I don't have a lot of friends, and I thought this would be a good group to hang with. So I'm going to go hang out with them. I don't know any of these people, but I don't really know anyone else, so I'm going to... Get in there and hang out with them. I'm just going to join the crowd. You know, kind of like when you were a teenager trying to convince your parents of something. Everybody else is doing it. 
Everybody else has one but me. I'm the only one. At which time your parents said, and you'll continue to be the only one. <laughs> Sorry. But maybe that was the case. But these people were in for the moment. They were wanting to follow closely behind Jesus, the Son of God, and get as close as they could and follow Him and be known as a follower of Christ. But they weren't expecting to hear what he said, I'm sure. Because he didn't say, hey, it's easy peasy. Here's all you do. Jump in behind. Let's go. All aboard. Get on the bus. We're headed out. That was not, that may be what they were expecting to hear, but that's not what was said. He didn't say, yes, there's, it's not really a big deal. I've got your back. Jump on in. Follow me. Life is easy from that point on, and you will be perfected. You'll never have another problem. In fact, he didn't say, don't worry about doing anything. Come on. He said, if you want to be my disciple... You must, by comparison, hate everyone else. Your father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even your own life. I spoke to many people this morning coming in. And you know, I didn't say, good morning, how you doing? I hate my own life. Not one person said that. I know there are bumps in our road, but we love life most of the time. Maybe we don't like some of the things that happen in our lives sometimes. But he says, yes, even your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. He says, so here's the plan. And if you do not carry your own cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. You cannot be, you cannot be, you cannot be. Here's what you must do. He, at least he lays it all out there for us, right? Here's where you have to be if you want to follow me. And I'm fairly certain most of us do not consider this on a daily basis. Most of us do not consider what he requires on a daily basis. So you must put Jesus first always. Always, always, always. And in a me society, that doesn't always seem the case, does it? It doesn't always seem like we're putting Jesus first in our every interaction with folks that we don't know. With folks that we try to share hope with one smile at a time. Maybe it's not as obvious as it should be. Maybe we need to be a little more juiced up in that category in 2023 and letting others see Christ in us and that he is first before anything else in our lives. Family, marriages, children, siblings. By comparison, by comparison of love, he's before all that. He says it must be like you hate all those folks. He doesn't say to hate those folks. He's saying by comparison of love, your love for me should be so much further up here that it appears that you hate everything and everyone else. But then... Then, he says, but don't begin. If you want to be my disciple, here's what you have to do. Here's how you need to act. Here's how you need to love. Here's where you need to put me. But don't begin 
until you count the cost. And I think sometimes we maybe don't explain the cost. When someone says, hey, I'm a new believer in Christ, we say, that's amazing, that's awesome. We try to disciple you, but we also need to get back to explaining the cost. It may cost you some things if you truly are a believer in Christ. But he says, don't begin. Don't jump in line. Don't follow the crowd. Don't go because they're going. Don't meet with this group of believers because that's the going thing. And when that kind of fizzles out and something new starts up, I'm going to move over to that place and join that crowd. He says, count the cost. Don't begin until you count the cost. For who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there is enough money to finish it? Would you do that? Would you say, hey, I picked up an extra couple hundred bucks this month. Let's start a new house. Materials are not as expensive as they were. Let's start a new house. Or how about a church building? Pastor, when are we going to start the new church? When prices aren't twice as much as they are supposed to be. Because once you start, you have to count the cost and know you can finish. That's why you see signs sometimes, a four by eight sheet of plywood coming soon. And ten years later, the paint's gone and the plywood's rolled up and there's grass grown up and whatever it was never came soon and it doesn't appear that it's coming later things happen all the time but count the cost why follow if you don't count the cost and why follow if you're not willing to pay what it costs so don't begin don't jump in line don't follow the crowd as I said just to follow ask yourself this are you willing to carry your own cross? Are you willing to carry your own cross? If it were that cross in the corner, everyone look back over there. Are you willing to drag that around with you this week, put it in your car, go everywhere with that? Well, it's not convenient, Pastor. We have a smaller car. I work in a small cubicle. That doesn't fit. The question really is, are you willing to be associated with the one who was mocked and spit on, ridiculed, made fun of, laughed at, and tortured? Are you willing to be associated with that one? If not, you are not his disciple. He says, Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation, running out of money, and when then everyone would laugh at you. In other words, you might say, I've made a decision to follow Christ, and I don't really need the church. I can, I can worship out on the lake while I'm fishing on Sunday mornings. I can worship from my deer stand. The Bible says forsake not the fellowship of believers. It means you need to be in, in a group, following together, following individual, individually, following as a family. But are you willing to be associated with that one? He says because... It's very important that you understand. You see, the symbol of the cross is actually a symbol of criminals who were put to death by crucifixion. 
wasn't that Jesus was the only person ever crucified and we go, wow, they did that just for him. They did that because they saw him as a criminal and they beat him within an inch of his life and then put him on that cross to die. Are you willing to go there? You know, we try to make some jokes sometimes. That, oh, you didn't just go there. Yes, I did. Oh, no, you didn't. Yes, I did. Are you willing to go here this year? Are you willing to say, for the first time in my life, I want to get after it like I never have before? I want to share Christ with others in a way that I never have. And he says, remember, don't begin until you count the cost. Says, That's what happens sometimes in a new year. We say, I'm going to work out this year. I'm going to change my diet. I'm going to change how we are working this relationship in our home. We're going to make sure the kids are listening more. We're going to make sure the dogs always have food and water because it's their responsibility. The children have to do that. And, we're going to, and our house is going to run just like a well-oiled machine. Our finances are going to skyrocket. We're not going to have any vehicles or appliances break down this year. I mean, it's going to be amazing. We've set all these lofty goals, but did we count? cost did we what's it going to cost well I'm going to have to spend a lot more time with my spouse if we're going to have less heated fellowship than we've ever had this year we're going to have to put in some time together we're going to have to go on some dates we're going to have to make sure we're on the same page in disciplining our children we have to make sure we're on the same page financially. We've got to make sure we're doing some things together. If you're going to make all those lofty goals, you have to count the cost. And that's the question. Can you cover the cost? Can you cover the cost? And sometimes people believe that when we say, can you cover the cost, that means, yes, I put my trust in Christ, he knows that I love him and I know that he died for me and I have a relationship with him for the most part. And so covering the cost is sometimes being undercover and covering the cost. Not being outspoken about your faith. And I believe this year is never before that's what he desires. So what are the costs? Can you cover the cost? Listen, you don't go to a restaurant. Maybe you do. If you do, I don't want to know about it. And look at the menu and go, I think I'm going to order the biggest steak they've got. I got $3. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, so I'm going to order it. You know, I've, I've heard tons of stories, but it only ever happened one time. And we were out of state coming back from, I don't know if it was a basketball tournament or a wrestling tournament, I don't even know, it was somewhere. We were somewhere out of state. that help you? And so we ate at this restaurant, and these folks beside us, they were just acting really odd. They were finishing their meal, and they act just it was just odd. And then she got up kind of abruptly. I thought, man, she must have really had to go. And so about a minute later, he gets up abruptly, boom. And that was a dine and dash, as they say. I've never heard of that before. And our waitress said they ordered two of the biggest things they had and bolted. I have never heard of that before. Maybe you have. Again, if you have this morning, you can need to come ask forgiveness for that. <laughs> because if I did that, I would trip on the rug on the way, hit my head on the door, and then have to call EMS. And I get prosecuted and stitches. So, But count the cost. You don't go to lunch with someone and say, oh, wait, I don't have the money. If you'll cover me, I'll catch you when we get back to the office. 
And maybe you've had to do that, and that's been a genuine thing. And if so, I'm sure you were covered. About the 13th time, guess who's not getting invited to lunch anymore? <laughs> you. Can you cover the cost of following Christ this year as never before? Have you even thought about it? You're going to worship him like never before? Can you? Will you? Are you going to pray as never before? How about fasting? Mm, there's one. We don't talk much about it anymore. Pastor, I need you to help me pray about something. I'm going to fast this week around 15 minutes or so and see if um, that will help. We don't fast and get everything out of our system. We don't fast from electronics. We don't fast from those things that would take our focus away from the Lord and focus on Him for a period of time to be refreshed and renewed and restored and have a reset. How about Bible study? How about small group? Are you willing to get into those things so that you can get more from your relationship? Are you willing to pay that cost? Well, that's just a couple hours a week extra that, that you know, I really don't have the time. Well, listen, when you understand who gave you the time that you have, that's the only time we have on this earth. And one day we don't want to look back and I heard a message this week and a pastor was speaking and he said, you know, when someone's on their deathbed, someone's on their deathbed, he said, I've never heard one say, man, I wish I would have made more money. Wow, I wish I would have worked more. I wish I had spent more time doing the things that I wanted to. And he's so right because I've heard and seen and witnessed the same thing. He said, what you hear is, with the family gathered around, I wish I had spent more time with you guys. I wish I had loved on you more. I wish I had been more involved in our church. I wish I had given more of my time and my money to the church to see people come to know Christ. I wish I had invested more in our children and our students so the next generation would know Jesus. So those are some things we need to be mindful of. Also serving. Jesus served. And I dare say he was much busier than we are. I dare say he had more folks needing things from him than you do, than I do. Blessing others, giving. When I say giving, I'm not just talking about financially and your gifts to the church or your gifts to ministries. I'm about giving of yourself, giving a smile to someone. A hug to someone that hasn't had a hug in months. Hey, can I pray with you when you're out in the public square? Reaching others. Just by asking someone, hey, are you having a good day? Pretty good. How about you? Good. Is there anything I can pray for you about? I'd love to pray for something. If you have something going on, I'd love to pray for that in the coming days and weeks. Verse 28, don't begin until you count the cost. This year has already begun, but have you even thought about this? Have you even thought about this? What your year is going to look like in your relationship with our Lord. You don't want to be the one that started the building and then couldn't finish. 
Because you see, we must always count the cost, right? When we go to the grocery store, we must count the cost. Sometimes we go by the bank and get a loan and then go to the grocery store and the gas station, right? See, can you run that out for 30 years? It's going to be a little bit. I got a diesel. I got a diesel truck, so it's going to be running on out there. He says, so you cannot become my disciple, verse 33, without giving up everything you own. We all have things we love. We all have stuff that we love. There are things that we enjoy, right? Chainsaws, tractors, those kind of things. Those things that we love. The things, I'm talking about things. You willing to give up those things? Are you, willing, are you willing to give up some time involved in some other things with some other folks in order to follow Jesus more closely? He says, by comparison, the love you have for your family and others it look like hate compared to what you need to be spending time loving me. You see, we will have difficulty as we follow. Troubles and struggles will find us. Disgrace and mockery may one day be the norm for you and me. We don't really like that. Does anybody like being embarrassed by someone else? Or mocked or shamed? You know, I, I don't hear about, I'm not really on there, but I don't hear a lot of things about people putting on social media, hey, I was mocked and spit at by three different people today. It's a great day. I had five people tell me they hate me today. I'm so excited. What a great week. Who does that? Nobody. Troubles are going to find us. And one day, being identified with Christ may cost us even more. And I would dare say to you, church, this morning, that it's coming sooner than later. It's coming sooner than later. You can think it is. You can think it's not. It's coming sooner than later. So consider carefully. Consider carefully. Don't just go along to get along. Don't just go, well, I like the people, and I'm going to go to church because that's... Why are you here? The fellowship is amazing, and yes, we have a wonderful, amazing church, and I love our church. But when you come, do you worship with all that you have? Do you pray with all that you have? Do you ever fast about decisions and just fast in general so you can become closer to the Lord? Are you involved in Bible study and small group? Because you see, you cannot follow at your own pace. And we sometimes say that, and I think it's sometimes a way that we just kind of push back what we need to be doing we procrastinate well I one day hope to get there but I'm just it's my journey it's my journey at my pace and I try to read the Bible once a month or so just in case listen you can't go at your own pace this can't be all that we get on Sunday morning if we go at our own pace, then we will lose sight of him. For he's continuing to move. He's continuing to do ministry in this community that we need to be a part of. He's continuing to do ministry on the other side of the world that we continue to be a part of. What will you do with that this year? If we stand still and he continues to walk and we're following him pretty soon... We're either going to have to sprint to try to catch up or get left behind. 
great cost brings great reward. Great cost brings great reward. You know, sometimes we try to skimp, try to spend less on something. I think it's the same thing. I'm going to buy this one. And then it breaks the first time we use it. Have you ever done that? Nobody has but me. Okay, great. In the tool world, that's how that goes. This one is a lot cheaper, though. It's, it looks the same. You use it the first time, and you're like, well, that was stupid. I should have spent that other buck 98. So, right, because that's how it is. You, you can't, whatever something costs, sometimes there's great reward in using that. But listen, what he paid that great cost brings great reward not only for Jesus, but for us. You see, that suffering before the cross and on the cross brought resurrection. All that suffering he went through, that death on the cross, wound up in resurrection. Because God said, yes, yes. You're going to have to drink of this cup. And he said, well, I will. I will. This cup of suffering. How often do we drink from a cup of suffering? I mean, in reality. I mean, I know we all have things, and sometimes we make small things bigger, and sometimes things are bigger than they seem. Yes, to us, they can be that way. But when we compare it in comparison... To what Jesus did. What does that look like? Because you see the cross brought reconciliation between us and God. Jesus bridged the gap. We're here. God's here. We have no way to get there. But he stretched out his arms. And made a bridge for us. By his death on the cross. Paying for our sins. And then his resurrection. And the great cost brings great reward. Make your decision. Because it's your decision. And then follow. Make your decision and then follow. But I challenge you, church. I challenge you, individual. I challenge you, family. To follow as never before. To be drawn closer together and closer to Him. Because when you're closer to Him, you'll be closer together. When you're further from Him, you'll be further apart. In all your relationships, if you are closer to Him, your relationships will be much better. Because you will be more forgiving, you will be more loving. You will be more kind. So make your decision and follow, but there's no recalculating. <laughs> You're going to have to decide. You know, on that, the, what was it? Not the Tom Tom before that. Y'all help me out here. Garmin, that was it. Yeah. The Garmin recalculating 6,000 times on the first model. Like, and then it went to something else and something else, and now it's on your watch, it's in your AirPods, it's in your coffee pods, it's in all of that. <laughs> so you don't have, you just have to, it just tells you. It doesn't even say recalculating anymore. You know why? Because we mess up too much. There's a limit on how much, how many times they can say recalculating. So now it just says, oh, turn left at the next light because you missed it back there. It's in a kind way. Because you see, we're either all in or we're not. We can't be a casual follower of Christ any longer. Church, we cannot do anything except follow closely because churches are closing every month, every year. We must continue to grow, continue to move, continue to fill these seats so our children 
will have a place to come and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren and our great-great-grandchildren that we'll never see probably so that they will continue in the faith that you know. So I'll ask again. Do you want to follow him as never before this year or just do your own thing? Or just say, I'm okay. He understands me. I understand him. We're okay. We're fine. I'm saved. I got fire insurance. If that's the case, then you are not a disciple. He says, you cannot follow me unless you meet these requirements. Then you are truly following me. See that whole thing about, yes, even your own life. Think about that. Yes, even you have to even, by comparison, hate your own life. Meaning, you may have to give up your own life for the cause of Christ. Are you willing to do that? So can you cover the cost? Will you cover the cost this year? Worship. Prayer, fasting, Bible study, small groups, serving, blessing others, giving, reaching others. Will you commit to that this morning? Because you see, we're only a week in. You have 51 other weeks that you can say, that is my number one goal. And you know what? If you make this your number one goal, following Christ more closely than ever before, guess what? All those other things you want to do, They'll line up. If you're treating your body as a temple of God, as the word says, you're following more closely. If you are blessing others, if you are giving more than you ever have, he will continue to bless you more. You know why? Because that's in his word. So if we get this one thing right, if we follow him more closely than ever, all these other things that we feel like we have to completely flip upside down in our lives, they will fall in line. And you will be blessed immeasurably. Perfect life? Nope. Trouble-free life? Nope. But a blessed life. A life full of joy, fulfillment and promises that are fulfilled would you pray with me Father we thank you that you make all the promises in your word truth God we thank you that when we get everything else in line in our world it's not in line with yours so God, thank you this morning that you bring that to our attention and you challenge us as a church, as families, as individuals to count the cost and then follow you. Father, we thank you for that invitation to follow, follow your son. Lord, I pray if there's one here today that does not know Christ as their Savior, that they would come today and say, I want to be a follower of Christ. I want to be his disciple. Lord, I pray they would come right where I am that we might have that conversation. Lord, you move your people. Lord, I pray you would move people as never before to come and say, Lord, let this year be the year that our family is closer to you than we've ever been. And we're going to follow you more closely than we ever have. We're going to love on our family. We're going to love on others as never before. And Lord, as a church, God, I pray you would just Move us to not be complacent. But empower us to reach many this year that do not know you and who are far from you right now. Father, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, move families, move individuals to this altar this morning to pray for our church, to get things right, and to follow you as never before. We love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Would you stand, please? Listen, don't wait. Don't wait. You come right now. Let's completely fill this place up and you get it right. Get it right, folks. Make it right today with Him.
Make your way, church. Come on. through giving you can do that you can drop it right there in one of those boxes or some envelopes there you can always do that online many of you have done that online already we're grateful for your generosity also if you've given in the last year like for 2022 pastor chris is standing right over there i'm assuming the giving statements are right there Right here in just a minute, they will be. Listen, if you did not receive a given statement in the mail, it means that we don't have your address. I say this every year. Maybe you think we have your address, but I think we don't because we would have sent it to you already. But if you haven't gotten one and you think you should have gotten one, we'll take care of that right over there. Chris is going apparently to get that. Pastor, you want me to go get that for you somewhere? We might have a little mix-up, buddy. Where are they? (laughs) Jeff, what what am I missing, buddy? They're over here. All right. So... Jeff, we, uh, amen, hallelujah, right over there. Praise the Lord. All right, anyway, if you need to give, come find me. I'll make sure you get it. Um, and also, if you're new with us this morning, I mentioned that in the beginning. If you're new with us, Chris is just making laps at this point. But but right, uh, he's going back over there to this room where Marquita is, is illuminated with a beautiful green light with some swag bags right there, Pastor Chris. And sweet Marquita over there, go swing by there if you're new with us this morning, or maybe you just haven't uh, swung by there yet. We would love to meet you, get some information from you. If you're willing, no pressure, just whatever you're cool with us knowing about you, and I'll give you a gift to say thanks for being our guest. I think that's it today. All right. Thank you guys for worshiping with us. You guys have a good week. Happy New Year.